welcome you to a glorious day. Today is the last Sunday in the month of July. We bless God for the ark of preservation from the beginning of the year until now. We thank God for safety, for protection, and for provision. The seventh month is special in the calendar of God. The seventh month of the year is a special month. Number seven is a symbol of perfection, completeness, and the end of an era. In the past, when a farmer cultivates a land, at the seventh year, he will allow the land to follow, that is to rest, and he will move to another location. My prayer, my prayer for you today is all the challenges of life all the issues of life, all those things that you have been contending with will not accompany you to next month in the mighty name of Jesus. When we shall meet next month, you will come back with outstanding testimony. Testimony of new beginning. Testimony that God has actually done it. And you will sing a new song. Songs of joy. Songs of victory, overflowing joy, peace in the mighty name of Jesus. Today, our topic is in time like this. In time like this. We are in a desperate and most unusual time in history as ferocious wind of pandemic blows across the globe. The scripture we read earlier today described the experience of the disciples of our Lord Jesus Christ while they were sailing on the Sea of Galilee. There was a terrible storm. They were so afraid, they thought they were going to die. But Jesus appeared to them and calmed the storm. Just like the disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, we are all mariners. We are sailors. But guess what? We are sailing in the sea of life. And at this present time, there is a ferocious storm blowing across the globe. Storm of pandemic, coronavirus. The storm is invisible, but for the apostle, the uh, disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ, the storm was visible. They could see it, but this storm that we are in right now, we can't see it. But the effect is terrifying, devastating. People are dying in hundreds and in thousands daily. Powerful nations of the world are on their knees right now. No more social engagement. All the other activities are zero. It is fear, anxiety, panic. Fear, anxiety, panic all over the world. But I have a good news for you. I have a good news for you. Do not let your heart be troubled. There is a ray of bright light. This is not the first time that human beings will be totally locked down during the flood. Noah and all the living creatures saved at that time were locked down in the ark for over 150 days. But on the seventh month, the Lord came through for them. On the seventh month, the Lord came true for them. Genesis 8, verse 4. Genesis 8, verse 4. And the ark rested in the seventh month. On the seventh day of the month, upon mountain Ararat, the ark rested. The process that terminated the total lockdown started in the seventh month. God who did it for Noah in the seventh month, is it the same God today? 
Yesterday, today, and forevermore. He changes not. It's not the man that should lie. Or the son, the man that should repent. Whatever he says he will do, he will do. This seventh month, the Almighty God will do something miraculous in the whole world. Because God remembered Noah on the seventh month. The Lord will have mercy on the world. And he will remember us. Put an end to this pandemic in Jesus' name. Seven months is special, like I said. In the book of Agai chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. Agai chapter 2, verse 1 to 9. In the seventh month, God spoke to Agai, the prophet, to tell the people to rejoice because he was ready to do a new thing. I have good news for you today. Rejoice at the storm rages. Rejoice. God is about to do a new thing. The siege is about to be over. Isaiah 43, verse 19. Book of Isaiah 43, verse 19. Behold, I will do a new thing. Now you shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. This desert is the unusual place that you will find a river to flow. That is the God we serve. Now the big question is this. What do we do in times like this? What do we do? There's fear all over the world. What do we do? I'm going to give you two points and we will pray. The first thing is that we must focus on Christ. Hebrews 12 verse 2. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith. The scripture we read earlier today about the uh, disciple of our Lord Jesus Christ. When they were faced with terrible storm, and Jesus Christ appeared to them, walking on the sea, Peter asked if he could get out of the boat. And Jesus Christ said, yes, come. And he did. And he actually walked on the water towards our Lord Jesus Christ. But when he saw the storm raging, he took his eyes off our Lord Jesus Christ and looked at the storm. And he began to sink. And he cried. And Jesus Christ will rescue him. Is it the same today? He's ready to rescue the whole world. Your problem is not greater than others. Your problem is not bigger than others. Your problem is not more than others. The evil is this. You think more of it. You think more of your problem. Rather than focusing on our Lord Jesus Christ. You are focusing on the issue of life. Why don't you bring the challenges to the feet of our Lord Jesus Christ and focus on him and see what he will do? Remember, it is not the burdens of life that weigh you down. It is how you handle them. It's not the burden of life that weighs you down. It is how you handle them. What happened to us is 10%. Our response is 90%. How do you respond to challenge of life? How do you respond when you have your back against the wall? How do you respond when you think all odds are against you? Isaiah 43 verse 2. The book of Isaiah 43 verse 2. He said, when you pass through water, I will be with you. When you pass through the river, the river will not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, the fire will not burn you. The, fire, the flame of the fire will not rekindle against you because it will be with you. The Lord will be with us. I hope somebody will shout hallelujah. The second point, before we begin to round off and pray, is we should cultivate the attitude of praising God. Praise is the greatest spiritual weapon that ensures victory over Satan. James 4 verse 7 says, Submit yourself therefore unto God. Then when you resist the devil, the devil will flee. Why? Each time we praise God, God comes down. God fellowship with us. And Satan is the author of darkness. 
Light and darkness cannot stay together. Cultivate the attitude of praising God so that God can always be by your side. As you are watching, as you are watching all over the world, maybe some might be asking, who thinks of praising God when life is threatened? Who can praise God when things seem to be out of control? Who can do that? Why can you, how can you rejoice when you are in a terrible danger? It is not fashionable. It is an uncommon thing to do. But guess what? Psalm 34 verse 1. Psalm 34 verse 1. I will bless the Lord at all time. All is all. And his praise shall continually be in my mouth. I'm going to share a story with you briefly. Many of you probably just have been aware of that story. It was the story of Nigerian um, junior soccer team. In 1989, Nigeria qualified for the World Cup and they did well during the preliminary stage, during the group stage. They did wonderfully well. Eventually, they got to the quarterfinal in Saudi Arabia. And they were to play against uh, the then USSR, Russia. It was a well publicized game. And at the start of the game, both teams gave good account of themselves. They played very well. But the Russian kept on scoring. And before the first half, they had already scored two goals. The Nigerians were two goals down at the first half. Then during the break, oh, we were thinking, oh, the, the coach is so smart. Oh, the coach will come out with strategy, at least to defeat the opponent. By the resumption of the second half, the status quo remained the same. Russia pumping another two goals. Now four goals to nothing. 30 minutes to the end of the match, of the game. Nigerians were four goals down, carrying four goals deficits on their head. But thank God for the Supporters club, the sheer leaders. They did something unusual. They started praising God, beating drums, and playing all kind of musical instruments. It was like a Christian concert going on. They were praising God, intense praise and worship. And God moved. And Jesus scored the first goal. Scored the second goal, scored the third goal, and lo and behold, the fourth goal, the fourth goal came, and there was commotion, especially in Lagos, the commercial city in Nigeria. There was a commotion. Cancelled four goals deficit, thirty minutes to the end of the game. Why? Because people praise God. When you do the ridiculous thing, the miraculous happen. They praise God and God move. The Lord will move for you in the mighty name of Jesus. But the story does not even end there. Nigeria went ahead to win the match on penalty shootout. And people were celebrating. And up to today, that match is being referred to as the miracle of Daman. The city where the match was played was uh, we we'll call it Daman or the Daman miracle. If you Google it, because I think nothing like that ever happened before then, and even after then, I don't even think anything like that has happened. When we praise God, the Lord moves. Then what happens when we praise God? Art shaking miracles happened. When we praise the King of Glory, Acts chapter sixteen, verse twenty-five to twenty-six, Acts sixteen, twenty-five to twenty-six, and at midnight, Paul and Sala prayed and sang praises unto God, and the prisoners heard them, and suddenly 
there was a great earthquake so that the foundations of the prison were shaken and immediately and immediately all the doors were opened and every one's bands were loosed how do you explain that they were chained they were in imprisoned and with fortified army were watching over them but yet they were praising God they were thanking God that was an unusual thing to happen because when we praise God what the, the Bible record there was an earthquake because God moved the heaven is his throne the earth is his footstool so the feet of the Lord Jesus of the Almighty God is on the earth and on that day he just took a step and there was an earthquake the Lord will move on your behalf in the mighty name of Jesus. I said the Lord will move for you. It doesn't matter what you are going through. It doesn't matter if you have your back against the wall. With what is going on right now, people are traumatized, emotionally traumatized. Because no more social gathering. Even children cannot even hug their parents when they come back from an outing. Families are so suspicious of each other. It's an unusual time. People are saying we have never seen anything like this before. Movement is cutted. No one can even travel outside your base. People are terrified. People are asking 1,001 questions and answers are not forthcoming. Our leaders are not even helping. So much conspiracy theory out there. Lies upon lies every day. Fake news all over the place. People are confused. It's as if we are in a state of anomaly, a state of numblessness. Confusion all over the place. What do you do? Do you join them to complain? Do you join them to murmur? What do you do in a time like this? Remember, the children of Israel, they could not get to the promised land until when the master prays and worship. They couldn't get to the promised land. All those periods that they were murmuring, complaining, they were just walking around in the wilderness. But the moment they added a degree to their resume, Master of Praise and Worship, MPW, then God took them to the promised land. As you are listening to me all over the world, the Almighty God will award you the degree of MPW, Master of Praise and Worship, in the name of Jesus. What happened when we praise God? Even as I begin to run off. Praise guarantees us everlasting protection. Praise is the best life insurance that you can ever think of. I know we insure, we have life insurance, maybe many of us. We insure our cars our houses, even our phone. We insure all these um, items, all our belongings. But that insurance is for protection. But the best life insurance that we can think of is praise. Because when we praise God, the Bible declares that God inhabits the praises of his people. He will always stay by our side. And when God is by our side, who can come near us? No principalities, no powers, no ruler of darkness in the heavenly places. None can come near us. Because we can boldly say that our life is hid with Christ in God. The only thing, the only way we can achieve that if we master the act of praise and worship. And my prayer 
for every one of us listening to me today, wherever you are, the grace of God will come upon you and you will master the act of praise and worship. God does not need our money. Not at all. All what he needs from us is to praise him, is to worship him. It's for our own benefit because he's the almighty God. You cannot add to him you cannot take away from him. He is the self-existent God. He is the Almighty. But for our own good, for our own sake, we must press him so that he can move on our behalf. As you do so, the Almighty God will come true for you. How do I know that praise is the best life insurance? How do I know? Turn with me to 2 Samuel 22, verse 4. The book of 2 Samuel 22, verse 4. I will call on the Lord who is worthy to be praised. So shall I be saved from my enemies. Protection. He said, I will call on the Lord. Who is, when you call on him, when you worship him, when you praise him, the Lord will protect you. The Lord will save you. The Lord will come true for you. How do I know? Sec the same scripture that we that I just cited right now. Second Samuel 22. If you read further from verse 47 to 51, I will paraphrase. God avenge us and bring down our enemies and deliver us from violent enemies man. He avenges us against our enemy. He brings down the violent man when we press him. Coronavirus is a violent man. It is what the Bible refers to as noisome pestilence. It started the noise in China. And the noise is all over the world right now. Making terrible noise all over the place. It's only God that can deliver us. What is it? What is it that represents violent man in your life? What is it? It's not left for you to identify all those things that represent violent man in your life. Why we are beginning to round off right now? Wherever you are all over the world, if it is possible for you to stand on your feet, please do. If it's not possible, that's fine. You can sit, you can, there's no, you can worship God anyhow, anywhere. I want us to just praise God in a minute. Just begin to call him all his name. He is the almighty God. He is the everlasting father. The eternal rock of ages. The great I am and I am. There is none like him. None can be compared unto him. Heaven is his throne. The earth is his full throne. He is the lily of the valley. The bright morning star. That shaking that glory. That reigning king. That coming king. Worship him. Appreciate him. He's Jehovah Nisi. He's our banner, our protector. He's Jehovah Shalom. He's our peace. He's the only one that can guarantee us peace. All around peace, all the days of our life. Just appreciate him. We have learned how to worship God. The only thing that God deserves from you is worship. Nothing more. Worship him today. Appreciate him today for all that he has done for you. He is a merciful father. He is by his mercy that we are not be consumed. He even said in his word, he said, can a mother forget a little child, a nursing child? He said, even if that happens, I, the almighty God, cannot forget you. Why? Because he has written your name on the palm of his hand. He will never forget you. He is ready to come through for you. Just praise him, just worship him. Just appreciate him. Just say, Lord, we thank you. 
Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Jesus. We appreciate We thank you for all that you have done for the whole world. And we know without any outer of doubt that you are going to have mercy all over the world. I know that we have strayed away from you. Maybe we have done those things that we are not supposed to do. Maybe by an act of omission or commission. Shedding of blood all over the place. But we cry to him that Lord have mercy. Have mercy. In your mercy do not pass us by. When you are releasing your mercy upon your children. Father do not pass us by. Come through for us O Lord. In the mighty name of Jesus. Just one prayer point. Just one prayer point. Even as our faces are different. So our needs and our desire. What is it in your life that represents the violent man? What is it? What is the challenge in your life? Address it right now. Call it by its name. Coronavirus is a violent man. Cancer is a violent man. Hypertension. Diabetes. What is it? Unfruitfulness? Barrenness? What is it? What is it that represents violent? What is it that represents violent man in your life? Tormenting you. The Bible declared that God deliver us from the violent man. He that dwell in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. See, I will say of the Lord, is my refuge and my fortress, my God in whom I trust. And surely he will deliver me from the snail of the valor and from the noise of pestilence. All those challenges in your life are noise of pestilence. They are contending with God in your life. Tell all those issues today. Address those issues one after the other. That they don't have any control over you. Because you are a child of the Most High. Oh, Father Lord, we just want to thank you. King of glory, we bless your holy name. As many who have brought their request before you today. Father, we know that you are a merciful Father. You are a compassionate and caring Father. Father, address to their request today. Oh God Almighty, address every question of their heart in the mighty name of Jesus. All those issues they have addressed to the O oh Lord. All those issues that they have brought before you tonight, uh, today, O oh Lord. Almighty Father, I pray it will not rear its head again in the mighty name of Jesus. When you took the children of Israel, from the land of bondage and they crossed the rest to the other side they began to sing a new song they said Egyptians are no God in our life we have seen them before but we fought for them and they said they will never see them anymore all your children today oh Lord by the time we come back in the month of August which is the month of new beginning for our monthly thanksgiving service all those issues that they have addressed today, oh Lord, they will see no more. In the mighty name of Jesus, you will fight for them, King of glory, because you are the almighty God. You are the great man in battle. You are the Lord of hosts. Fight their battle for them. When they come back, oh Lord, next month for celebration, it's going to be celebration galore. It's going to be a season of celebrations. In the mighty name of Jesus. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. I want to talk to anyone today. If you don't have a covenant relationship with the Almighty God yet, you need to come to Him right now. He said, Behold, I stand at the door and I knock. If anyone opened the door of His, I said, I will come in and fellowship with Him. God is calling on you today. Wherever you are, if you have never given your life to Christ, you just say, Lord Jesus, I recognize that you are my Lord and my Savior. I confess all my sin to them. And I forsake them. I come to you, O oh Lord. Accept me, Father. If you have made that conversion with your mouth, Jesus Christ, the omnipresent Lord is everywhere, is ready to accept you. And if you have done so, 
please just text save or salvation you are going to see the number on the screen the number will be displayed on the screen just text save or salvation to that number and somebody will reach you and wherever you are all over the world just at Identify a Bible-believing church where the undiluted word of God is preached and your life will never remain the same again. Almighty God, we want to thank you. What a good God you are. We come before your presence today. Lord, we know despite all the challenges going on right now, we want to thank you for the ark of preservation because you kept us alive. We just want to bless you. We appreciate you. The overhead shadow, Lord, even as we navigate through the journey of life, we pray that your protection will be available unto us. You will keep us safe. And we pray for all our leaders all over the world. The wisdom to do the right thing at the right time. Father, grant unto them. We know that the hearts of the kings and queens are in your hand. You turn it the way you want like the source of a river. We commit the hearts of our leaders unto you, Father. Minister unto them, O Lord, so that they will do the right thing at the right time. In the mighty name of Jesus. Father, Lord, we just want to thank you. King of glory, we bless your holy name. Be that be exalted, O Lord. In Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. The word is already working in you. We hope you were blessed by this message. For more messages and information about the church, please visit us at www.rccglivingspring.org.